Welcome to our very first video describing the concept of scale. Scale is important because it's related to how we count. And I'm going to take you through a set of counting exercises. Why are these important? Well, counting is important because we need to know how to measure events. We need to know, for example, how to say whether the following statement is true or false. The Fukushima disaster was 168 times greater than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. So let's start. Supposing we only have two fingers. So we can only count on two fingers. So let's start counting. One finger. Here is one. Normally we call that the units. Now we got to use up the second finger. Here we have what we call two. Notice that the two green cylinders are in a line. Well, we doubled the unit to get two, so what's the next step? We're going to double the two that are arranged in a line to get a square. And how many cylinders are there in the square? There are four. Two times two. Note that to position yourself in a square, you need to have two dimensions. What's the next step? We went from one. We doubled it to two. We doubled it to four. The next step, yes, you got it correctly. It is eight. We now have a cube of these green cylinders. There are two by two by two cylinders. Two times two times two again gives us eight. We are counting base two, and that's the base that's usually given the letter B. Base two is used for all kinds of counting when you're dealing with computers. One final thing to note. How many dimensions does this arrangement use? Well, it's a cube. So to be in a cube, you need three dimensions. How about a plane? This is a plane. The arrangement is planar. How many numbers describe a position in a plane? Two. And how about a line? The arrangement is linear. Two cylinders, one dimension. And how about this guy? A point. How many dimensions does a point have? Let's start it all over again with a three-fingered base. Now we have three fingers for the base. The unit is still one. We're going to use up all three fingers, so we are going to have three in a line. What do we do next? Repeat that three times. Three times three is nine. You can see the arrangement goes from linear to planar. And what's the next step? Replicate by three again. Three layers of nine, 27. Here you see the cube even much more well defined. Three dimensions to build this arrangement. Two dimensions to build this arrangement. I say arrangement because it is the way we arrange the cylinders. A linear arrangement. Dimensions, three, two, one. What's the dimension of a point? You can start to see how the scale is growing. Let's try 10. Now we're to 10 fingers. Replicate the unit 10 times we get 10 in a line. Now we re replicate that line to get the progression of a plane. Here it is. How many are here now? 10 times 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. What would we do next? Well, we would do the cube. 
I have a sad story to report. The Lego store ran out of a thousand green cylinders. So we don't have the dimension and scale for you. However, this whole exercise was constructed 50 years before Lego was invented by a person called Maria Montessori. And here I have the complete set, counting by tens, to show you the scale. She used beads. So, the unit, one. Replicate the unit ten times. Linear dimension. The arrangement is in a line. There are ten beads. Replicate the ten beads ten times horizontally to get how many beads? Well, we all know that ten times ten is a hundred beads. And now the real piece de resistance re replicate that planar pattern of a hundred beads ten times to get a thousand beads. We now see the idea of scale represented geometrically. The base is 10 in this picture. This requires three dimensions to locate a bead. The dimension associated with this is 3. For those of you who are aware of powers, which will be summarized later, 10 to the power 3, the dimension. 100, 10 squared. 10 to the power 2 is 100. And the linear case, simply 10. 10 to the power 1 is 10. And this little guy, 10 to what power and what is it equal to? Well, we know what it's equal to. It's equal to 1. 1, 10, 100, 1,000. What is the power of 10 that gives us 1? Well, you can kind of figure it out. We go from 3 we subtract 1 to get 2. We subtract another 1 to get 1. We subtract another 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. This will be summarized in the following video on a PowerPoint summary.